So here I am, it's the big reveal um, of ANTA. Um, it was a job where diagnosed uh, blocked heat exchanger. Um, the original manufacturer's engineer came out, said it was blocked heat exchanger. Um, I ca came out, found the pump was installed the wrong way around, and in fact the flow was reversed through the boiler. Um, turned the pump around, still had symptoms of a blocked heat, ex heat exchanger, put a replacement heat exchanger in the boiler that was supplied free of charge by the manufacturer due to their diagnosis very nicely because they didn't have to supply one, so, so you know, good on them. Um, but after I did that, I found it was a lack of residual pump head, checked the dimensions uh, in the, in the uh, boiler uh, instruction manual to find I had four and a half meters head resistance in the main heat exchanger. And we had a five meter head pump uh, leaving us with half a meter residual pump head to run the system. So here it is, the cure that I said I was going to do. Um, basically, here we've got close coupled T's. Nothing special about close coupled T's, just basically exactly what they say, close coupled T's. And here we have the original pump that was running the system and the boiler. So now I've got half a meter uh, residual pump head just driving across these two T's. Once we get to this point, uh, because of close proximity, we've got delta P close to zero here. Um, so there's no, or, or look close to close to zero in, um, interaction between the pumps. So this pump is literally driving the heat exchanger down to this point. This pump then picks up the duty. Now my resistance in my system is probably, I don't know, maybe two, uh, two and a half meters head. I don't know, I haven't done a calculation. I just knew it wasn't going to be more than five and sometimes we just take a punt on these things um, and I had the pump anyway so we popped it in I'm now getting good delta T on this side good delta T on this side it's not perfect I'm getting I'm getting about delta T 13 delta T 14 on this side which suggests maybe this could have been a 1560 pump uh, interesting enough just for the heat exchanger um, but it's, it's close enough. I'm not going to start fighting over a, over a couple of degrees. And, and I'm getting uh, um, a sort of something similar onto this side as well. I can't remember now. It was a week or so ago since I measured it. They actually closed the site down. Um, they've uh, decided they're not going to make money on this, going to lose money. So they've, they've closed the site down. So I've gone to, just about got in today, just as a bit of a favour to do this video actually. So that's it. Um, yeah, so when we tested it all up, everything worked. Radiators all came on. Index radiator was getting nice and hot. Delta T wasn't quite perfect. Delta T wasn't quite perfect on the boiler, but it was very close and everything worked. And yet again, this close couple of T's, just such, such a cheap, clever fix um, to give you, give you hydraulic separation. Uh, just to bear in mind that um, we're told by some of Eastman Tech that this isn't hydraulic separation. Uh, they, they claim that only a plate heat exchanger is, but if you read most of the other technical literature, Kalefi, etc., they'll tell you this is hydraulic separation. So um, I'm going with Kalefi and all the others, um, whereas I normally go with Wiesman. But um, yeah, okay, so I hope that uh, clears that up. Um, just a little bit more. The, the other idea I've got at the moment is to actually put a plate heat exchanger in here. Um, the only problem with the plate heat exchanger is, as uh, I've looked at them up, and they've got about a head resistance of about 2.5 uh, meters on the ones I've looked at, which means this pump wouldn't have been able to drive a flow, correct flow through the plate heat exchanger. Um, just to go through the boiler and the plate heat exchanger, I would have still needed um, a large pump. So we need to be a little bit careful of that if we're gonna try that idea. But the main principle behind my plate heat exchanger idea is actually filtration. I'm still getting problems with dirt in boilers, um, even with Spirotex, MagnaCleans. Well, we know MagnaCleans don't work don't work for a long time. Spirotex have given me good service, but I've had a few let me down recently. Um, and I just want to save the boiler. It's much cheaper to, to, to just keep a, a plate heat exchanger clean. So the idea is to pop a plate heat exchanger in here service it once a year, just descale it on the service or uh, do a component exchange and have it descaled and replaced um, and run the secondary side through the plate, primary side through, through the plate that side and we keep our boiler absolutely spotless. Uh, should be able to prolong the life of our boiler considerably doing it that way. Um, that's it.